if we get started with this one. And today we're going to go over definite integrals. Okay, but the actual definition. So the definite integral oh, not on of f of some function, we call it f of x, on the interval a to b. That's just another way of saying from A to B. <clears throat> and it's denoted by the integral of f of x respect to x from A to B. Oops, straighten that up a little bit. And it is the limit of the Riemann sum as n approaches infinity. Okay, or, in other words, the integral from a to b of f of x with respect to x is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of f of x1 plus f of x2 plus f of x3 all the way to some f of xn times delta x. Now, just certain parts of the integral. From a to b of f of x with respect to x. The f of x is actually called the integrand. The A is called the lower limit of integration. Uh -oh, clean that up a little bit. Now the B is the upper limit. dx just represents with respect to x. Indicates with respect to x, which means x is the variable of integration. any questions on that so far? All right, I'll leave that up there for a few more seconds.
right, looks like everyone's done. Okay, so let's say for example, use the definition of the definite integral to evaluate the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared with respect to x and want to use the right endpoint approximation to generate the Riemann sum. So, for our first step, we're going to find our delta x. Okay, so when they gave us the integral symbol from 0 to 2, it's really just another way of saying from 0 to 2, where this is your a and this is your b. Okay, so our delta x is equal to b minus a over n, which is equal to 2 minus 0. They never gave us how many rectangles or how many intervals, so we actually just leave that as n. Which is 2 over n. Okay, so that's our delta x. We're going to need that later, so I'm kind of making sure it jumps out at us. Okay, so your second step, you want to find the function at the right endpoint. At the right endpoint. Okay, so the left endpoint and right endpoint will have two different I guess you call them functions. So this one will be one for the right endpoint. Okay. okay. So since we know that we have the interval of x i minus 1 and x i, that means every right endpoint will be pretty much in the same spot. Every right endpoint will have the interval x sub i minus 1, because remember, this is your left, and this one's your right. Nope, x sub i, sorry about that. I don't know why I did the i minus 1. x sub i is equal to x sub 0 plus i times delta x. Okay, and this is for your right endpoint. Okay, so if you think about it this way, let's say if you have a graph and you're just plotting all the right endpoints. Okay, so you have your right endpoint here, your right endpoint there, and your right endpoint there. Remember, where you start here, that's your x0, that's your x1, that's your x2, that's your x3, and it keeps on going and going and going. Oh, let me clean that up a little bit. Okay, 
Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we started at the right endpoint, we'd start at x1. So it will be x0 plus delta x. Remember, this is your delta x. From this point to this point, from this point to this point is delta x. So all of these distances are your delta x. Okay, so it'll be x0 plus delta x to go from x0 to x1. Okay, so that would be your first point. Then your second point would be x2, which would be x0 plus 2 delta x. So it's x0 plus 2 delta x. And it just keeps going and going and going, and it always puts you right at the, on the right endpoint. Okay, does that make sense? All right. So how many times did we do it for this one? Oh, for this one, they never gave us an actual number, so we just leave it as the end. There was one difference between last time. They told you, okay, two times or three times. All right, so since we do that, our x sub i, oh, and on this one, just a, actually let me put it as a quick reminder. Okay, so if you remember, For Riemann sum, you had a, not a zero, a equals x zero, which is less than x one, which is less than x two, which is less than x three, which goes all the way down to some x z n, which at the very end would equal your b. So in this case, our x zero is equal to a, which is zero. So x0 zero equals 0 for this problem. Okay. So it always depends on what your a value is. Okay. So that means your xi is going to equal x0, which is 0, plus i times delta x. So that's i, and your delta x is 2 over n. So that means your xi is going to equal, I guess you could say 2i over n. Bring that up a little bit. Okay. So that gave us our xi. So now we're going to use that to find the function at the right endpoint. Okay. So if we know that our f of x, in this case, equals x squared, then that means f of x i is going to equal x i squared. Since we have our x i, f of x i equals 2 i over n squared. Or you can just make it 4 i squared over n squared. And this is our function at the right interval. So any questions on that one so far? Is that the answer? Oh, no, not yet. No? We're like halfway through. Instead of x i, it would be x i minus one. So that would be all of your left endpoints. So this is just the right endpoint. Yep, this is just for the right. That's the only time we'd use this one. 
is when they ask for the right endpoint. All right, now I'll continue this on another sheet since we're running out of space there. Oh, no one's still writing. Yep. All right. Okay, so now for your third step, you're going to use the Riemann sum and you're going to use your summation formulas. So we know that our Riemann sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x i delta x is going to equal the sum from i equals 1 to n, our f of x i, we just figured that part out, 4i squared over n squared. And our delta x, we figured that out earlier, is 2, in, 2 over n. Okay. So we're really, we can combine those. Make that the sum from i equals 1 to n of 8i squared over n to the third. So what we can do is we can get everything without an i and just factor it out. So that means our sum from i equals 1 to n of f of x i delta x equals 8 over n to the third times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared. So if you remember, the sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. So that means this is going to equal, lower that down a little bit, 8 over n to the third, and we're going to replace this with this. So that's times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Okay, so if we go ahead and just multiply those two together, we get 8 times n. Well, actually, if we go ahead and just simplify that first. Actually, I could have left that because I'm starting on the other side. 8 over n to the third. You have 2n squared, which will make that 2n cubed, plus your outer and inner, that would make that... 1n plus 2n, 3n times 8, so that's 24n to the third, well, n squared. That will be 1 times n plus 8n over 6. Okay, so now we just go ahead and combine those two. Uh oh, I'm about to put 8 for some reason. So that makes 16 into the third. And let me lower that down some. Give it a little bit of space. Now you wouldn't do the product rule here? Because and Oh no, because you're not looking for the derivative. Yep, you're just multiplying them together. 
Yep, so you have 16 into the third plus 24. Oh, not 24. Yep, 156. So actually, it will probably be easier. I'm trying to think, how did I do it earlier? Actually, I skipped ahead because this should be three. That's why I was looking. Yep, because I did that. So actually, this should now be 24. N squared plus 8n over 60 into the third. I'm like, okay, that's a little bit big there. Shouldn't that up there be one n then? Or just write that n? 2n to the third plus 3n squared plus n. And then once you multiply the 8n, you get a n. Oh, yep, yeah, you're right. It's me kind of jumping ahead steps. Right. Then if we just separated these, 16 into the third over 60 into the third plus, oh, clean that up a little, 24 in squared over 6 in to the third plus 8 in over 6 in to the third, that ends up giving us sum from i equals 1. Really, that's just this brought down. Instead of writing it over and over and over again, just wait it till the end. Of f of x i delta x is equal to, that just becomes 8 over 3, because the n is cancel out and it simplifies. Okay. And this becomes 4 over n once it simplifies. And this becomes 4 over 3 n squared. <clears throat> okay. So our fourth step would just be apply the limit on the right hand side, which is actually our Riemann sum. To the right. Okay. So that gives us the limit 8 over 3, as n approaches infinity, plus the limit of 4 over n, as n approaches infinity, plus the limit of 4 over 3n squared, as n approaches infinity. Okay, So we know these two are just going to approach 0. And the limit of a constant is just a constant. So you have 8 over 3 plus 0, plus 0, which is 8 over 3. All right, so that's using the definite integral definition. Which is pretty similar to the limit definition where, yes, there's a shortcut out there, but you have to go through this first. And once you leave out of this class, you never have to use it. No, you do have to use it again, just not until you're later on. All right, so any questions on this one? All right, I'll leave that up. Oh, he wants to do it. Oh, yeah. The reason you use the filter zero, you said it has x approaches infinity. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's in the denominator. So if you get, yep, 4 divided by number, yep, bigger than number. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so we'll start with the next example, and this one will be the left endpoint, which is pretty much the same steps, but just one small difference. And my 
might as well start that over as soon as I'm done. It'll shut off in four minutes anyway. Well, will you commonly not get N, or will you usually get N? Oh, yeah, you'll get N. Usually? Sometimes. Yeah. Some terms will disappear, some will combine, but you'll usually end up with N's in it. Okay. Okay, so what if we want to use the... Definition. But in that last one, we didn't get n, right? Oh, yeah, we had n just before we applied the limit. Yep, so you'll usually get n's there. Then once you apply the limit, that's when the n's disappear. Oh, so would the answer be 8 over 3 or the. Oh, no, it's 8 over 3. Oh. Because those two just became 0. All right, see so the definition. of a definite integral to evaluate okay, the integral from 3 to 8 of 8x with respect to x. Let's say in this time we're going to use the left endpoint. approximation to generate Riemann sum. Okay. 